Hello and welcome to Archaeologists Anonymous, a safe space for you archaeology addicts out there. On today's episode, we'll be going over the top seven frightening ancient weapons. First, we'll be starting with a real OG. At number seven, we have the Atolatl. The Atolatl is a spear thrower that is especially useful for hunting, and this is one of the oldest complex weapons that humans ever invented. The design is basically an extension of the arm, which allows the thrower to get more leverage on the spear, making it easier to throw the spear farther and faster. Dave! This was definitely a long-range weapon, and it could reach speeds of up to 93 miles per hour. That's pretty scary. Atolatls actually appeared independently throughout the world because they've got a relatively intuitive design. Some of the places it cropped up include Paleolithic Europe, Australia, and in the Americas. The name of the Atolatl comes from Nahuatl, which is the language of the Mexica, or you might know them as the Aztecs. Funnily enough, those modern plastic ball throwers that you might see at a dog park operate with a very similar principle. Though, let me tell you, I'd much rather be on the far end of a ball thrower rather than than a spear from an atolatl. Coming in at number six, we have the Chotel. This curved sword comes from Eastern Africa. It's double-sided, which allows for various frightening fighting techniques, especially against cavalry, in which the curve of the blade could be used to hook horseback riders and drag them down. Damn! The curved blade of the Chotel could also be used to reach around an enemy shield and end up puncturing some vital organs. Weirdly enough, the Shotel's frightening combat ability is approved of by Danny Trejo. Hosted by Danny Trejo. The curved Shotel reminds me of the Egyptian Kopesh, which was a shorter weapon that could be used to pry an enemy shield. There's no hiding from these curved weapons. Scary stuff. At number five, we have the Bagnak. The name of this weapon means tiger claw, and it's from South Asia. The two holes on either side are where you'd put your thumb and your pinky, and you could actually conceal this weapon in the palm of your hand. It's kind of like a much more intense tiger version of brass knuckles. Sometimes people could actually put poison on the ends of the tips of the Bagnok to make it that much more deadly. Interestingly, this weapon was not just used in military combat. In fact, oftentimes women would carry them in their hands to protect themselves on the street at night. So it's a bit like an ancient version of mace. At number four, we have the Chakram. The Chakram was a battle frisbee. I'm pretty sure battle frisbee is all I have to say for why I included this on the list, but let's keep going. The Chakram was a mainly throwing weapon with a sharp outer edge, but it could also be used in hand-to-hand -hand combat. These, like the Bagnak, have ancient roots in India. While there are a couple different throwing techniques, the most famous is the Tajani. You'd basically twirl the Chakram on your index finger and then fling it with a flick of the wrist. And the brass version of the Chakram could be thrown over 330 feet, which is longer than the distance of a football field. It is pretty horrifying just how far they were able to throw this deadly frisbee. Finally, Chakrams came in a few different sizes, and smaller Chakrams could be worn on your wrist to act as a sort of defense against grappling. So yeah, count me out of this round of frisbee golf? Nice approach! Number three, the ancient Chinese repeating crossbow. This crossbow comes out of China during the Warring States period. This is another weapon that could be tipped with poison, in this case, poisoned arrows. This weapon had a relatively short effective range at 230 feet, but it could launch seven to 10 bolts in 15 to 20 seconds, depending on the skill of who was wielding it. So this could shoot pretty fast. Basically, this repeating crossbow was one of the oldest rapid-fire weapons in history, and we have excavated repeating crossbows in tombs as old as the 4th century BC. You can tell that this weapon was effective because variations of it stuck around for several thousand years. I can tell why it stuck around. Would you want to charge across a field facing against a repeating crossbow? No! At number two, we have the Makua Whittle. This weapon was essentially a wooden club with obsidian blades sticking out the side, and it was used throughout ancient Mesoamerica. These obsidian blades were no joke. They have edges that were actually sharper than steel blades, and we know from historical descriptions that they were sharp enough to decapitate people. 
Some Makua Whittles were designed to be used with one hand and a shield, and others were designed to be used with two hands. Interestingly, since Warfare in the Region placed a value on live captives, the spaced out obsidian blades were intentionally less fatal, and the flat side of the weapon could be used to knock out an enemy unconscious so that you could capture them. Knowing what would happen once you wake up, I would never want to run into a Makua Whittle. <laughs> Finally, at number one, we have the Macedonian Sarissa. The Sarissa was used by Philip II of Macedon to conquer Greece, and then Alexander the Great to conquer the world. The Sarissa was double-sided, and the backspike could be planted into the ground to anchor against enemy charges. This backspike also helped serve as a counterweight to the front spike, which was useful because the Sarissa was very heavy, it could weigh up to 12 to 14 pounds. Armies using the Sarissa formed phalanxes, which were basically walls of spears. Forming a phalanx took a lot of careful training and drilling, because fighting in this tight, coordinated phalanx formation took a lot of skill and practice. The Macedonian Sarissa was developed to counter Greek hoplites, who also used the phalanx. The Greeks already used pretty long spears, but the Sarissa was even longer, and this length gave the Macedonians a big advantage. The length also meant it required a bit more training to use. The Sarissa and the phalanx basically set the standard for combat in the region. You can understand why a literal wall of spears would be the most terrifying ancient weapon in history. So those are seven frightening ancient weapons. I have been Sean Sylvia of Archaeologists Anonymous. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.